We're in module eight now about percents. This is 8.1a using a grid to model percents. A percent is a ratio that compares a number to 100. And this symbol is used to show a percent. It's the percentage symbol. 25% means 25 parts of 100. 25% is equivalent to 25 hundredths as 25 to 100. And we can write it as a ratio as 25 to 100. Percent means per 100. We can use a 100 grid to model a percentage. 1% means one part of 100. It's equivalent to the ratio 1 to 100. We can write it with the colon as 1 to 100 and 1 to 100 as 1 hundredth. We have 1 shaded out of 100. And since 1 hundredth is equal to the decimal 0 0.01 as 1 hundredth, that means 1% is equal to the decimal 0 0.01. And we'll get into that a little bit more in Lesson 8.2. To write a ratio as a percent, we need to write it as an equivalent ratio with 100 as its second term, as its denominator. If we have 12 to 50 as a ratio, we need to give it a denominator of 100, and 50 times 2 is 100. We have to multiply the numerator by the same thing. We get 24 for our numerator. That means we would shade 24 of the 100 units. That would give us 24%. If we had the ratio 12 to 25 to give it 100 as its second term as the denominator, we'd need to multiply it by 4. So we multiply the 12 times 4 and get 48. We shade 48 of the 100 units. That would give us 48%. And the greater ratio is the greater percentage, which is shown with the most units that are shaded. So this would be the greater percentage. That's the greater ratio. And notice this second term is a 50, and this second term is a 25. They both have 12 for the first term for the numerator, but this is the greater ratio because when we give it 100 as the second term, the denominator, we end up with a greater numerator, a greater first term. The sale ratios for two flavors of candy are shown. The ratio for lemon is 15 to 50, and for strawberry it's 9 to 20. We can rewrite each ratio as a number compared to 100, then we can shade a grid to show the ratio. We have 15 to 50. We need to give it 100 as its second term, the denominator. We multiply that by 2. That means we need to multiply 15 times 2, which gives us 30. So we're going to shade in 30 of the 100 units. For 9 to 20, we need to multiply the 20 times 5 to be 100. So we need to multiply 9 times 5, which is 45. And we shade 45 of the 100 units. The first term tells us how many units to shade. For the lemon candies, we shaded 30 out of the 100 units. It was 30 to 100. That's 30 per 100, or 30%. For strawberry, we shaded 45 of the 100 units. That's 45 per 100, or 45%. The greater percentage is the greater number per 100. It's the greater ratio. For every 100 candies sold, 30 were lemon and 45 were strawberry. 100% means 100 out of 100. All 100 units are shaded. That's why 100% means all or the whole thing. You'll hear someone say 100%. It's all of it. And a percentage less than 100% means less than one whole. So 99% would be less than one whole. We would only shade in 99 of these units. And a percentage greater than 100% means greater than one whole. So 101% is greater than one whole. We would need a second grid 
and we would shade all 100 of these and one of the units in the second grid. So for greater than 100%, imagine we had a ratio of 6 to 4. We want to write an equivalent ratio that has 100 as the second term. So that means we need to multiply 4 times 25 to get 100. That means we need to multiply 6 times 25. That's going to give us a ratio of 150 to 100. That would be 150%. And we'll talk about that more in the other parts of this lesson. So, we finished this lesson and we now know how to use a grid to model percents. We're going to move on to the second part, connecting fractions and percents. So just remember, percent means per 100. It means parts of 100. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.